What's going on guys, welcome back to another Horizon Forbidden West video and today let's take a look at 5 more amazing legendary weapons that you're definitely not going to want to miss. In this video we're going to take a look at how to acquire them and also how they stack up against one another and also a couple more as a bonus at the end of it, so let's begin. And by the way I'm still doing a giveaway for this month for a free copy of a game of your choice. You simply have to follow the links down below in the pinned comment. And I'll give another huge shout out to Instant Gaming for making that possible. We can of course also follow their links down below and get some of the best gaming discounts today. Let's begin with the Tinker Sprite Legendary Tripcaster that you acquire once you finish all of the four hunting grounds in the game with full stripes. So this includes the first one in the Daunt region really close to the starting area, then there's the second one on this side of the map in Plainsong, the third one will be located in the Shearside Mountains and the fourth and final one is located in the Rain Trace region. You might also need to have the Claus Rider override for one of the challenges, but for the most part, you don't have to be too far into the main story to even finish these and get the legendary weapons. But once you're done with the hunting grounds, you will get that Tripcaster straight into your inventory. And I kind of like this weapon, it gives you access to a wide range of packs, in this case Explosive, Stagger Beam and Shield Wires. Now the Explosives in this case are probably my favorite, simply because if you also invest points into that Trapper skill line you can set a ton of these on the ground and they will cause massive explosions against most enemies. I'm saying most because this is better suited for smaller enemies or anything that might be closer to the ground. Taller creatures or anything that might have a huge step could simply go over them and completely bypass those explosions unfortunately. Meanwhile the stagger beam is definitely quite interesting because it essentially blocks enemies from crossing it completely. So it's a great way to kind of cause an obstacle in their path so that you can like unleash a more powerful attack that might require more charge up and don't want enemies to get anywhere near to you. This also brings us to number 2 which is the Sky Killer and possibly my favorite weapon in the game but also the best legendary spike thrower in the game. You acquired this from the side quest called The Way Home on the boat on Legacy's Landfall which is the island on the very western part of the game and unfortunately you won't be able to reach it unless you pretty much finish the game or at the very least are very close to finishing the game because you also need the flying mount and yes it's going to also come in handy in many of the other missions and other legendaries that we will talk about in this video and what you have to do here is to help two Quen navigators to find a gyro compass for their trip so obviously the sunwing mount comes in quite handy once you're done with that it automatically gives you the sky killer spike thrower straight in your inventory. Now this features two types of explosive spikes including one more advanced that deals massive damage and there's also a second one that deals fire but that one can also explode though for a little bit less damage. And overall I recommend coupling this with the machine master skill tree called splitting spike technique which makes this weapon even more amazing as it essentially lets you to split that spike into multiple other spikes so that you can cover a huge area in explosions. It's especially amazing against any enemy that is too oversized for its own good, like some of these Thunder Jaws or other similar machines. I really enjoy it because you can just like spam this and not even care about other weapons and 9 times out of 10 you're gonna be more than capable of taking down and completely killing off any machine in the game. Of course, you do need to place those shots properly and it's best to pay attention to any any weak parts that are weak against explosions but overall it's such a high AOE range on it that chances are you're going to touch them anyway. Now moving on to number 3 we have Ancestors Return which is a legendary shredder gauntlet and yes they are quite underrepresented here on this channel. You have to complete 8 relic ruins and that's going to reveal a ninth hidden one underground in the side quest called Knights of Light. Now during these you have to collect special relics by solving somewhat elaborate puzzles that you find randomly out in the wild. Now obviously to complete these in the first place you first have to reach at least the 12th mission in the main story campaign which will give you all of the tools necessary to open up these puzzles like for example the igniter for the fire gleams, the diving mask for some of the underwater sections and finally the ability to destroy vines which comes at the 12th story mission. 
but once you're done collecting all of the eight relics you can go back at Sturm right here in the hidden amber in the desert region as he's going to give you the final location right beneath the same area and once you're done with all of that you can climb back to him and once you finish with the mission he's going to point you towards that chest next to him that will hold that really awesome legendary shredder gauntlet now gauntlets can feel a bit gimmicky at first but they can actually do wonders if you know what you're doing basically there's two mechanics here that you have to keep mind of the first one is the fact that gauntlets when thrown can bounce back from the enemies and you can catch them back in your inventory completely avoiding using any ammo so this means you can pretty much go in with infinite ammo assuming that you're constantly catching those back the second mechanic is the fact that the third time you throw it if you throw it again after that that gauntlet is also going to cause an explosion against the target which usually also staggers them and applies an effect the big psa that i have for you here is to stay further back from the enemy if you want to have an easy time catching those bounce backs otherwise you're going to render it completely useless and you will feel frustrated when using this tool it's also going to not fare well against targets that do a good job at closing the gap to you or if you're not doing a good job at running away from them but otherwise if you know what you're doing it can be an incredible weapon moving on to number four we have another really awesome blastling and this is going to be the wings of the 10 legendary blastling you acquired this from finding all of the 12 black boxes in the game and i know what you're wondering what are even those well basically there's going to be 12 crashed airplane locations in the game that also hold black boxes usually you find these in higher up places like at the top of the mountains but a few select occasions are also like beneath water or in certain settlements that is why the sun wing that you get towards the later parts of the game comes in very handy this time around but you can obviously complete them way before that by the way here's a map of all the locations you can quickly access if you want to like finish this really fast now obviously you will find out about these black boxes from the collector in memorials grove but you can also just go right away and collect them and then speak to her once you're done with that she is going to give you a ton of resources for each black box that you bring in and once you give in the 12th and final one she's also going to give you the legendary blastling now this comes with two types of explosion bombs and one adhesive and the adhesive is the one that i'm kind of in love with right now because it works wonders against large enemies especially the tremor task normally if you leave this machine unchecked it's actually extremely fast and versatile despite its stature so of course the adhesive ones will stick it in place and then you can switch to the explosive bombs and just like completely destroy it from far away and yes it doesn't have a big ammo count but it's not like it even needs to you're just going to destroy and annihilate any target especially the bigger it is so definitely one of my favorite weapons right now in the game and on a final note i also want to do a final comparison with another weapon that you don't necessarily get for free but i would say it's the best all-arounder in the game which is obviously the death seeker shadow a hunter bow and yes the one that you get for about 80 medals back at the arena now right now i think that this is my favorite weapon altogether from all of the weapons in the game simply because it comes with a massive bonus to tear damage so this means enemy parts will fall like candy when you shoot them off even more so if you combine it with the notch ability you can just like stick three arrows at the same time and chances are something will explode rip off or simply fall because there is nothing in the game right now to resist that so definitely something that you might consider maybe once you got all of the previous weapons but personally i was able to get it way before getting them and it was definitely helpful against some of these other challenges in case it was needed of course this is it with my top five legendary weapons right now in the game and how to get them obviously let me know down below if there's anything else on top that i missed and i'll see you guys in the next video